Well, right now to the glorious Tamar Valley in the northeastern corner of Tasmania. Farmyards and vineyards right down to the Tamar River, flying high through the treetops and an aquarium dedicated to seahorses. The Tamar River connects Tasmania's second largest city of Launceston with Bass Strait. It's a peaceful rural setting for farmyards where little has changed in the past century. Explore these farms and you'll find a range of exotic bird life, from turkeys and quails to peacocks. Amidst these tranquil scenes, there's a small mining settlement that's received more than its share of prominence. Beaconsfield is these days home to racing traps and fruit stalls. But its gold mine was the scene back in 2006 when two miners were trapped underground for 14 days after a rockfall. Across the waters of the Tamar, there's a magnificent forest, Hollybank. It's a plantation forest, studded with holly trees. It's in this setting that the more adventurous can ride along cables strung between the recording? highest trees. Well, now for a real thrill, we're going to fly almost like a bird, except we'll be hooked up with this carabiner. We're going to fly down a series of cables at quite high speed here at the Hollybank Forest Reserve, just north of Launceston. In all, there are seven separate cables to whiz along here at Hollybank. I'm flying like a bird. <laughs> Some are short, just 15 metres, but the longest is almost 400 metres from touch-off to landing, allowing riders to get up quite a speed. The cables are stretched out across and down the Piper's River. And once you've committed to the first ride, you're up here for the long haul, unless you want to shimmy down a tree. In all, it's three quarters of a kilometre of high riding. And as I'm about to experience, the force of the wind up here can twist your body in all directions. Now this is the most confronting of all the time. I'm starting to spin. The reason I'm starting to spin is because I've got the camera out and that's actually turned me right around. 70 k's an hour! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So really. How is that? Really, mate, I really thoroughly enjoyed that. I did. Right to the end, there's the opportunity for innovation on these cables as our instructor demonstrates. It's been high energy fun, high in the treetops here at Hollybank. Back on the Tamar River at a place called Beauty Point, there's a wharf housing a most unusual exhibition. Outside, all appears normal with fishing a popular pastime. But inside the main building, there's a collection of most unusual creatures. And now the first place in the world to ever breed seahorses. Giant crabs, they're on display here. So too are giant cuttlefish. But it's the seahorses that this place is dedicated to. How cool is this leafy sea dragon with its long leaf-like protrusions all over its body? They're found in shallow temperate waters off Australia's southern and western coastlines. Then there are the weedy sea dragons found in seaweed beds where their long appendages are meant to camouflage them. All of these are on display to the public, although Seahorse World here is also a serious research and breeding facility. As far as we know, there's about 34 different species of seahorses. We thought at one stage there was over 100 different species and then we found out seahorses can change colour. So, yeah, now there's only 34. We have around about a quarter of the world's population here in Australia and that's mainly because we have um, tropical water and subtropical water as well. Karen, this is a breeding establishment where you're breeding pot-bellied seahorses. We are breeding pot-bellied seahorses. We're actually the first in the world to ever do so. So, it's so pretty how exciting. many would you be breeding in here? Well, at stages throughout the year, we have up to 14,000 seahorses at any given moment. At the moment, we have around about 6,000 seahorses altogether. So, Incy Wincy, so tiny, just born yesterday here, eh? Very, very tiny seahorses. 
Yeah, these ones are actually about a week old, believe it or not. Okay, now you will take them through all stages of growth, watching all sorts of behaviours. Yes, we're trying to figure out what seahorses are all about. Because we were the first in the world to breed them, we don't really know a lot about seahorses. The more we can research them, the more we can learn about them and teach the rest of the world. So what you do know about them is that this is part of their breeding courtship process. It is. They actually do a little bit of a dance together and they'll dance and swim together, sort of in a synchronised pattern. And they'll go up and down the tank for around about three days while they're deciding whether or not they like each other enough to have babies together. What we do know is that the males carry the baby and give birth. They do, absolutely. The female, she transfers the eggs to the male. He carries them inside his pouch and fertilises them in the pouch, carries them for about 30 days and then has the babies live. Quite a ritual we're watching here where they're all writhing and moving upwards and absolutely. downwards. Absolutely, yeah. Very, very lovely. They quite often get tangled up together. You see them hanging on with their tails. They don't really mean to do that. They hang on with their tails to anchor themselves so they don't get swept away in the ocean. So feeding time? Feeding time, yes. They love their feeding time. They'll all come over to the, the front here. We just feed them mysid shrimp, which is a type of zooplankton. And that's alive? That's live at the moment, yeah. Normally we will give them frozen food. This is a treat every now and then we'll give them live food. The more they get over there, the more they will grow and the more food they can get into their bodies. And what we're seeing is that when they eat, they snap their heads forward very they quickly. They do. It kind of looks a little bit like they're sneezing, I think. They snap their food, they snap their, their snout, so they're sucking their food in really, really quickly. And we can actually catch one, can we? You can actually pick one up if you scoop in underneath the seahorses and very quickly pick them out of the water. Oh, goodness gracious, <laughs> mate. Look at the way they catch up on each other here. A tangled web of glorious little little seahorses and they can stay out of the, the water for just a, a few seconds, eh? They can for about five minutes, believe it or not. Now these young ones are massive here, not quite fully grown yet. Not quite, no. At 18 months they are fully grown. These ones range between about six months to up to 18 months. What happens to those seahorses you breed? Um, most of them will head off to the University of Tasmania or the Maritime College for research purposes. The more we can learn about seahorses, the more we can learn how to protect them out in the wilds. Many of the potbelly seahorses bred here in the Tamar Valley will be sold to pet shops around the world as the fascination for these tiny creatures grows. When next we travel Oz, back to the Kimberley Coast, this time to the magnificent Mitchell Falls and its sacred rock art sites. The two teams take us to central Queensland for a camel endurance rally. And the central New South Wales region around Wellington. Discoveries from the age of the dinosaur. Shearing giant rabbits. Well, that is this episode of Travel Oz. I'm Greg Granger. Happy travels. <laughs>